as we've talked about at different junctures in the past, one of our objectives is to build a sustainable, sustainably competitive team. And we think this trade allows us to do that. Uh, we'll bring three players back to our major league team that will uh, impact us and help us improve in a variety of areas, but also gives us some really great building blocks for the future. So uh, for a variety of reasons, we thought it made sense in which we're balancing both our short-term and long-term success. And you know, in the end, we felt that it balances both of those needs pretty well for us. A few things, maybe I'll touch on the players individually, then happy to answer questions. Uh, Josh Naylor is a left-handed hitting uh, corner player that uh, we feel has got a chance to be a very good contributor offensively. He's got a track record of hitting in the minors, um, puts the ball in play consistently, makes really hard contact, and we think those are two good ingredients for him to have a successful career as a major league hitter. Uh, Cal Quantrill is currently a really successful major league reliever. Uh, with a pedigree of starting. Uh, currently, he'll go into our bullpen and uh, be an asset for us there, but we think he has a chance to be not only a successful reliever, but a successful starting pitcher. Uh, Austin Hedges uh, is renowned for his elite defensive ability, uh, does an extraordinary job of leading the pitching staff, really excels in all areas uh, behind the plate. So he'll join Roberto Perez and Sandy Leone um, with what we feel is now the best defensive catching contingent in the, in the major leagues. In terms of the minor league players, uh, Arias is a young uh, Venezuelan shortstop that's really skilled defensively. Uh, we think he's got a chance to be an above average defender. He's also made great strides at the plate offensively, had a breakout year in 2019 uh, in, the, in the California League. Um, Cantillo is a uh, lean projectable left-hander, six foot four left-hander that's got a very deceptive fastball changeup combination with a developing breaking ball. Our pitching group is really excited to have an opportunity to uh, partner with him in his development. And then lastly, Owen Miller is a uh, very versatile right-handed hitting infielder that can play all three infield spots. Uh, he actually skipped high A, went right to double A uh, in 2019 and succeeded there. So a handful of guys that we think, again, not only um, impact our team this year, but add depth to our system and position us to be successful in years to come. So I'll pause there and uh, answer any questions. Chris, can you kind of shed some light on just the timing of the trade and what kind of led up to now being the right time? Sure. Uh, timing of the trade, um, obviously deadlines tend to accelerate conversations. So over the course of the last week, I would say conversations around all of our players intensified. Um, it came to a head uh, yesterday where we made meaningful progress and narrowed down the number of teams that had interest in CLEV and then made what we felt was the best deal. I think we finished the medicals and um, wrapped up the trade around four o'clock this morning um, and then in, informed players um, you know, when we thought it was not unreasonably early to call them today and then um, move forward from there. Chris, who takes uh, Clevenger's spot in the rotation? So Zach Plesak will be joining the team today, and he will take uh, Mike's spot in the rotation tomorrow. Did you feel because of um, the ability to trade Clevenger, why were you able to do that? Terry, I think it, you know a lot of credit goes to the pitchers that we have on our team and within our system and, and the people that have been involved in both acquiring and helping them develop because we do feel like it's a strength of our team, and you know, we felt like we you know, had some options that we could turn to in our rotation and allow us to fortify other areas of our team. And, and that's what kind of positioned us to do that. Without the, the starting pitching depth we have, we wouldn't have been in a position to make a trade like this. And I think we're excited to get a couple of pitchers back in this deal that we do think, um, you know, we have a chance to really help us and be successful major league pitchers. And we're excited to, to partner with them and, and help them grow and develop into successful major leaguers. Thanks. Yep. Chris, did the incident in Chicago have anything to do with you wanting to move on for Mike? No, I think we moved past that, Jason. I think, you know, we it took us a little while, about 10 days or so, before Clev rejoined our team, but he did and you know, and and was one of, uh, you know, was back on the major league team, and we were prepared to move forward with him. In the end, we felt that there was enough interest uh, across the industry and Mike that we could make a good baseball trade, and we feel that's what we did. He still had – plenty of control time obviously still two years left so why did it make sense to do this deal now in the middle of the season when you're in first place rather than 
over a winter? Well, Jason, one of the things, as I mentioned, that we're seeking to do is both impact this year and future years. And this deal allows us to do that, where we're again, again during bringing back a blend of players, both to our major league team and our system that will position us to do that. So we're excited about bringing Josh and Cal and Austin to our major league team and, and think they'll help us in, in areas of need. And we're excited for Zach to rejoin the rotation. I think I know a lot's transpired since he last started a major league game for us, but uh, he, he was a really effective starter for the starts that he made this season. And we're excited to welcome back and, and give him the ball. Chris, I hear what you say about a sustainable future and all, but do you be more specific about how this trade helps you for this season, especially if Naylor's numbers aren't outstanding? Well, Jeff, unfortunately, we haven't had outstanding offensive numbers in a variety of areas. Um, we do think that Josh's track record in the minor leagues will help transition. I think even if you look at his small sample in the major leagues, um, he's been a productive player and, and maybe even more productive than some of the options, at least to date, we've currently had. Um, I think when you look also when you look around the game, Jeff, there were a lot more teams that were looking to acquire players and trade players. So acquiring established major leaguers, it was not easy to do at this deadline. We did explore a number of other options, uh, both on the offensive side and on the pitching side, but ultimately weren't able to conclude those. This is the one that made sense for us, and we think it does help us both now and in the future. Chris, I was looking, and I saw Naylor, they're listening like 5'11", 250. Um, how is he in the outfield? Yeah, so he's a, he is a big guy, Terry. He's put a lot of work in over the course of the last year working on his agility and his movement. And we feel he's moving around better uh, this year than he has even in past years. So we'll look at him as an option both in the outfield and uh, if we ever have a need or opportunity at first base. So, but basically, he's going to pretty good, pretty, get a pretty good shot by the outfield then, is that? Yes. I mean, again, we'll figure out the best way to position guys on various nights, but I would see him potentially playing a combination of outfield and um, maybe some DH at bats. Fran Mill's also been working really hard in the outfield and Kyle Hudson's been excited about some of the progress he's made. So uh, there, there may be opportunities for him to get out and play the outfield as well. Thanks. Yep. Chris, how much are you anticipating that uh, uh, Cal is going to be sort of in a setup role or is that still a decision that Terry and Sandy and the staff need to make? Yeah, we'll still need to make that Jensen. The, the good news is we have a lot of pitchers out there that have pitched effectively, and we think Cal Bolster, Bolsters are already a strong group. So exactly which innings is, he'll pitch will be you know, dependent upon matchups and who's available and things like that. But we think he's got a chance to succeed out there. Chris, when dealing with the same team, I think this is the third year in a row that you and the Pirates have been able to work on a deal. Does that make it easier, obviously, to have conversation because you already know their system, or is it more difficult? I think it helps in that we have a good foundation and we know we, you know, we spend a lot of time on their system and, and feel like we know their players and have familiarity with them. It certainly helped in a year like this year where information's maybe not the same as it was in the past. The Padres were great in partnering with us and, and sharing information at the alternate site. So we did share both video and data from the alternate site and that helped us kind of confirm some of our assessments of the players that we did receive back. But um, yeah, they've had a lot of players that we've liked, and I think we've had some players that they've liked, so we've happened to match up. Is there a deadline on a player to be named, Chris? Uh, November 15th. Just curious, did any of the players you got today come up in talks last year? No yes. Deal? This isn't what the first a lot time we've had this. I don't I, – I need a look. We have asked about all of these players in the past. Yes, every one of them. They've been part of different iterations of deals. And I would say, I would comfortably say at this point, we've had hundreds of iterations of deals. With the <laughs> Chris, were you surprised at the amount of activity? I know a week or so ago and visiting with you, everybody was like, who knows? But there was an awful lot of activity. What, what, were you surprised at the amount and, and some of the guys that got moved, key guys? I think AJ was single-handedly determined to make sure there was a lot of activity. So there were a lot of guys coming and going from San Diego. Uh, but yeah, uh, Tom, we weren't sure exactly what they expect. I do think it, it turned out, I haven't had a chance to fully reflect on the deadline and think about how it compares to 
years past. I know for us, other than having the meetings over Zoom, it felt the same. I mean, we were extraordinarily busy over the course of the last week and over the last few days have operated with very little sleep. So that part felt familiar. Um, and so, yeah, it, it was, I'm not sure that that's what I was expecting a week ago, but that's how it played out. Thanks. Chris, is this the one organization that can look at a rotation and run out Bieber, Carrasco, Savale, Plesak, McKenzie, and still have an Adam Pletko to go to if need? I mean, it's the depth has been remarkable. Has that always been at the forefront of, of your mind? I know you talk about on spring training, you want to leave with eight guys that you can depend on, but to be able to continue to maintain that through this deadline by dealing with Clevenger, was that always something you kept in the back of your mind? Well, Jensen, our goal will always be to continue to develop players as best as we can. The, the better we are at acquiring and developing players, the more successful we'll be. And to the extent we can have success and, and develop enough players where we not only have a quality rotation for ourselves, but may have opportunities to trade some of those guys to address other areas, that, that gives us options and alternatives that uh, without that depth, we wouldn't be able to consider. How much did uh, Clevenger's future salary, perhaps, you know, driven up through arbitration, play in this deal, Chris? Based on, a, you know, the financial, based yeah, on the Paul, I think I've shared in the past, we, one of the things that we do need to do is, is manage our finances in a thoughtful way. But we want to do that in a way where uh, we can remain competitive. And so, you know, whether it's the Trevor deal last year or the Kluber deal this past winter or other deals that we've made that have had a blend of both short and long-term balance, um, those are opportunities that we explore because we think we have a chance to do both. Again, compete in the short term and in the long term. And this is another example of that where um, we feel we're, we're able to, to do a combination of things. Chris, I know you said Miller played, I guess, with all three uh, infield positions. Like, but what's, what's he best at and what's he like at short? Uh, he, he's, he can play all three, Terry. He's had experience at all of them. Um, probably most comfortable at second, but he's, he's played shortstop, and we think he can be an option there for us. He's a, he's a gamer. He's got very good instincts. Um, Arias, when you watch Arias play, the tools jump out, <laughs> the, the young athletic actions. Um, with Owen, it's more the, he's got great instincts, understands where the ball is, puts his body in a good position to make plays. So um, we're excited to have him and think, again, he could play all over the diamond for us. Were you really going to talk, uh, trade with the White Sox? We don't close any doors, Paul. <laughs> there are only 29 teams to trade with. So <laughs> if a trade makes sense for us, We'll do it.